welcome to whiteboard programming where we simplify programming for you with easy to understand whiteboard videos and today i'll be sharing with you best android libraries that you can use as a developer so let's get started number one moshi moshi is a library that converts json into java and kotlin models a lot of people refer to moshi as json 3.0 well this library is superior than json in every aspect like it's faster it includes kotlin support throws predictable exceptions and it doesn't use broken date time adapter by default further converting json into java model and vice versa is quite easy with moshi Number 2 Retrofit Retrofit allows you to define your REST API as an interface. You can flexibly manipulate the API requests body, header, query parameters and much more via annotations which can make everything clean and simple. Lastly, it also allows synchronous and asynchronous API call execution which at times is a life saver. Number 3 Glide As you already know, Android image loading and handling API is quite terrible to use. It's a nightmare to even resize an image without getting the famous out of memory exception. Well, Glide is an image loading library that exposes a very nice API, allowing you to transform your image however you want it. This library allows you to easily load a remote image into your image view, define fallback images, scale your images and much more. Number 4, Timber Timber is a powerful yet simple logging library built on top of Android Log class. It allows you to easily turn logging on and off in your application. It also offers nice support for logging formatted strings and exceptions. Because of all these benefits, Timber is one of the core libraries that you can use for almost all your Android projects. Number 5, Room Room is an official Android ORM. It includes great support for RX and live data, so you can decide to use it however you like it. The main benefit that Room offers over other ORMs is that it's simple and flexible. Other ORMs can come with much more complex APIs that require you to read all their documentation thoroughly before you can use them. Whereas Room uses standard SQL syntax that is incredibly easy to understand, allowing you to dive in without spending hours reading the documentation. Number six, Chuck. Chuck is an HTTP inspector for Android that allows you to dig into your application's HTTP history on your mobile device. The HTTP log is displayed as a notification which you can expand to open full Chuck UI. By using Chuck, you will be able to see whether an issue persists on Android or on the backend side of the application which becomes quite handy while managing quality assurance teams. Number 7, Android KTX Android KTX is a set of Kotlin extensions that wraps Android API making it more user friendly for you. The whole purpose of this library is to make Android APIs more pleasant to use. It adds a lot of methods and cool new features to Kotlin such as ability to use named parameters, lambdas and default parameter values to your development process. Number 8 Picasso Picasso is another great image library for Android. By using Picasso, the process of displaying images from external location is simplified. It also supports complex image transformations, automatic caching to the disk, image view recycling and also download cancellation in an adapter. What's unique is that this library handles every stage of the process. It starts from handling HTTP requests and also handles the caching of the image, just like Glide does. Number 9, Exoplayer. Exoplayer is an Android media library developed by Google. It provides an alternative to Android's media player API for playing audio and video both locally and over the internet. Exoplayer supports features that are not currently supported by Android's media player API like dash and smooth streaming adaptive playbacks. Number 10, JUnit. Now JUnit is a framework used for unit testing. The framework contains a set of methods to check an expected result against the actual result and makes a heavy use of annotations. Number 11, Espresso. Espresso is a great test framework which is a part of Android testing support library. This test framework allows you to create user interface tests for your Android apps. This means that with Espresso, we can write test cases that can check if the text of a text view matches from another text. Espresso tests run on both actual devices and emulators and behave as if an actual user was using the app. Number 12, Calligraphy. Calligraphy is one of the popular custom font libraries available to your Android development process and it is 
quite easy to get along with it. With this library, we can easily declare a single font across all our Android application or even define fonts individually to a text. Number 13. Android Job Android Job is an Android library used to handle jobs in the background. Instead of using separate APIs with one code base and checking for API versions to know which scheduling API to use, Android Job reduces the code size altogether with stress and does this automatically for us. Number 14. Camera Fragment Camera Fragment is an implementation of Fragments which allows you to easily integrate a camera functionality to your app. It previews directly the camera view and provides an easy API to capture or manage your device. Also, you can set up your own layout and control the camera using this library. Number 15. Dagger in a nutshell, Dagger is a fully static compile time dependency injection framework. When developing large applications, you don't want to handle dependency injections yourself because the code will grow quickly and become extremely difficult to maintain. Dagger helps you avoid this because it creates dependency injection graphs in compile time via annotation processing. With that, I hope this video was helpful to you and served value. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for future updates.